The Kraft Foods Company presents The Great Gildersleeve. <laughs> it's The Great Gildersleeve, starring Harold Perry, brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of parquet margarine, and a complete line of famous quality food products. It's been a bad week for Gildersleeve. A bad week. It was one thing after another. First, they took the ceilings off meat. Then they started taking the ceilings off other things. Already overdrawn at the bank, Gildersleeve could see that the wolf would be at his door long before supply caught up with demand. So he has pulled himself together and rallied his little family for a last-ditch fight. Bertie, children, the time has come. I mean, the time has really come. We've got to cut down. We've got to cut expenses to the bone. Bertie? Yes, sir? Hereafter, Bertie, no more expensive cuts of meat. You mean no more meat? If necessary. There are other things, beans and so on. Yes, sir. You won't like them, though. You can put up a lunch for me when you make Leroy's. I'll eat it at my desk. Save a little that way. And coal. I'm starting the furnace late this year. Might save a ton or so. The goodness knows we could use it right now. I'll say. If anybody's cold, wear a sweater. I haven't got a sweater. You had a sweater, Leroy. What did you do with it? I went through the elbows. Stuffed paper in them. <laughs> We're buying no more sweaters. Oh, another thing. And this means you, Marjorie. No more movies. Movies are out. No movies, no furnace. What'll we do in the evening? We'll go to bed early and keep warm. Some fun. Young man, this is serious. Your uncle had to go to the bank last week on bended knee and apply for a loan. Gosh. Your uncle is a debtor, Leroy. Do you know what that means? It means you're in debt. That's right. <laughs> I uh, hadn't meant to bring this up, Bertie. You needn't mention it around the neighborhood. No, sir, not me. I don't mention nothing. It's temporary, of course, but nevertheless. Folks ask me anything, I tell them nothing. Let them mind their own business. That's what I say. What they want to come around here asking me questions for, I ain't information. That's the stuff, Bertie. <laughs> How's Mr. Gillsleeve doing? That's his business. So go on, run along. Don't come sticking your nose in here. I don't know nothing. I'm deaf, dumb, and blind. I am. That's what I tell him. Well, thanks, Bertie. I don't tell him nothing. I'm sure you don't. Nothing. <laughs> I know I can depend on you. I only wish... I don't tell him nothing. <laughs> I only wish I could depend on everybody the way I do on you. Mr. Gillsleeve, I know how it is. It's been nip and tuck between me and the finance company ever since I can remember. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you what I'll do. I'll say you ain't home if you say I ain't home. It... <laughs> well, uh, it's not quite as bad with me as all that, Bertie. <laughs> Just a small sum to tide me over. I got a little overdrawn there somehow. But these are strenuous times. We've all got to pull in our horns. Unky, I'm sorry I said anything about the movies. I'll gladly give them up. Me too. They don't mean anything to me, really. Well, I'm sorry to have to ask it of you children, but... Oh, it's nothing. Forget it. Well, thanks. After all, I've given up a few things, too, you know. I know you have. Haven't had a cigar now in a week. It's driving me crazy. Unky, there's one in your humidor. I know because I saw it when I was looking for my rubbers. Why don't you smoke it now? No, my dear, I'm saving that one for Christmas. <laughs> Poor Unky. I know what I'm going to do. I'm going to make some money. How? Nah, people wouldn't buy lemonade in the winter. Uh, come here, my boy. What? This is life, Leroy. Too bad you have to learn about it so young. That's what happens. You try to live right, you save your pennies, and something like this has to come along. That's life. <laughs> I guess there's nothing to do but batten down the hatches and sit tight here till this thing blows over. I 
I must say, Bertie, that wasn't a very big lunch you put up for me today. That's as much as I give Leroy, and you know Leroy. Yeah, but I guess you don't know me. <laughs> Darn it, where is Leroy? I don't know, Miss Kilsley. Well, I'm hungry. But dinner's all ready just as soon as Leroy gets here. Come home here, no lunch to speak of. Look at that. It's 6.30, Bertie. He's supposed to be home before dark, and he knows it, too. Yes, sir. I'm hungry. Marjorie, do you know... Oh, there he is. Praise the Lord. Now I can get on the table. Hello, Joe. What do you know? Just got back from a picture show. Leroy, Uncle Mort has been looking for you. Yeah? Hi, Uncle, my late? Leroy, where the devil have you been? Guess. I'll play no guessing games. I want you to account for yourself, young man, this very minute. We've been waiting dinner for you half an hour. You keep out of this. Leroy, where have you been? I was downtown. Mr. Bullard brought me home in his new car. Gee, Mr. Bullard's a swell guy, Uncle. I'm not interested in Mr. Bullard or his swell car. I want to know what you were doing downtown. You really want to know? That's precisely why I'm asking you. Well, just a sec. <laughs> there, 45 cents. How did you get that? Selling papers. Selling papers? On the corner of State and Main. I'm sorry I was late, Unc, but I had five left and I couldn't sell them. And then Mr. Bullard came along and I sold him the whole five. Gee, he's a swell guy. He drove me home, too. Gosh, if I can sell him five papers... Leroy, I can... how much did Mr. Bullard pay you for those five papers? Three cents apiece. That's 15 cents. You take these 15 cents and you run across the street and return them just as fast as your little crooked legs will carry you. But I'll keep on them. I don't care. I'll not have you taking charity from the neighbors. It wasn't charity, Unc. This was business. Oh, I... stop it. How could you do a thing like that, Leroy? How could you humiliate me that way? Standing on the street corner, my own nephew in that terrible-looking sweater, begging practically. What will people say? What will they think? Gosh, I'm sorry, Unc. How does that look for me? Answer me that. Well, I didn't think. You never think. Leroy, come back here. That's the last time I ever tried to be a help ever. <laughs> Anki. Well, the boy ought to think of those things. You don't have to look at me like that. All right, I'll apologize. <laughs> Your old Uncle Leroy. Leroy, what are you... <laughs> Leroy, what are you doing in there? I'm washing my hands. Mr. Gensley, it's on the table and darn near ruined. Leroy, it's on the table and darn near ruined. <laughs> Open the door, my boy. I want to have a talk with you. Leroy... <laughs> That's the boy. I want to apologize for what I said to you, Leroy. I sort of misunderstood. I guess I'm a little hungry, too. That's okay. I'm afraid I seem very ungrateful, but I'm not, believe me. I think you were making a very generous effort, and I'm proud of you, my boy. That's okay. It was splendid of you. However, we can't accept charity from the neighbors, can we? You wouldn't want to do that. Who's accepting charity? I sold the guy some newspapers. No, calm down, calm down. <laughs> Let's go to dinner, shall we? Charity. <laughs> Try to look at it this way, Leroy. If a man buys one newspaper, it's safe to assume that he's buying it because he wants it. Or even two newspapers. Maybe he wants to start a fire or something. Or wrap a fish. <laughs> <laughs> but five newspapers, Leroy... That's charity. It isn't either charity. It's salesmanship. <laughs> well, look at it this way, then. We wouldn't want Mr. Buller to get any wrong ideas, would we? Now, he sees you down there on the street corner selling papers and that ragged sweater out at the elbows. He might get the notion that we're hard up or something. Well, aren't we? Well, not that hard up. <laughs> well, for corn's sake, what's all the howling about, then? <laughs> I give up. What's for dinner, Marge? Birdie found in the newspaper. It tastes like cream bones. <laughs> That's it. You sit down and enjoy your dinner, Leroy. I'll be right back. I'm just going to run across the street to the Bullards. What for? I want to give him his 15 cents. What on? I'm sorry, Leroy, but I will not be beholden to Rumson Bullard. Not for one minute. Good evening. 
I... Uh... Oh, hello, Craig. Is your father in? Where's Leroy? Uh, Leroy? Well, he's at home having his supper. Is I want pa- Leroy to come over. Uh, well, he can't right now, Craig. He's having his supper. Why can't he come over? I just told you he's having his supper. <laughs> Uh, tell your father I'm here, Craig. I'd like a word with him, if I may. <laughs> Craig, tell your father I'm here. What do you want? I'll take that up with your father, if you don't mind. Is it about money? <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, it is. How did you guess? He told Mother you'd probably be coming around. He... <laughs> Listen, I want to speak to your father, Craig. You run and tell him I'm here. Father isn't home. I know perfectly well he's home. Leroy came home with him. Now you go get him. He isn't home. He told you to say that, didn't he? He's avoiding me. Will you tell him? Who's Craig? Who's at the door? Not home, eh? Uh, It's your neighbor, Gildersleeve, Mr. Bullard. I'd like a word with you if you're not too busy. Oh, Oh, hello, Gildersleeve. (laughs) Your boy Craig here just told me you weren't at home. (laughs) (laughs) Why, Craig? You knew I was at home. How could you say such a thing? You told me to. Upstairs. Children. <laughs> Where do they get these notions, huh? Yeah. <laughs> well, Gildersleeve, what is it? Well, in the first place, I wanted to thank you for driving Leroy home this evening. Why, not at all. I saw the little tyke standing on the corner there shivering. I thought he had no business down there, so I picked him up. Oh, very good of you. I suppose you know what he was doing there. <laughs> Took it into his head to sell newspapers. <laughs> Where did children get these notions? You'd think we were hard up or something. <laughs> Here's your 15 cents. Well, what for? The papers Leroy sold you. He shouldn't have done it. Nonsense. I was glad to help him out. No, take it. No, I couldn't. No, no, I insist. Please, 15 cents. It's nothing. It's nothing to me either. Here. Really? I, I don't see why you make such a fuss about it. I saw the kid standing there. I picked him up. He told me how things were a little tough and he was trying to help out. I thought it showed real spunk. I was glad to contribute. Listen, you take this 15 cents or I'll leave it on your doorstep. Well, if that's the way you feel about it. That's the way I feel about it. Well, thanks. Thank you. Is that all? That's all. Well, good night, then. Good night. (laughs) And don't believe everything you hear from Leroy. It. The way he acts, you'd think I'd gone over there to make a touch. And not be humiliated this way. Gotta have more money, that's all. Gotta have more money. Money. Only one thing to do. I'm going in there to the mayor tomorrow, and I'm gonna tell him... Tell him what? Uh... Never mind. But I'm going to tell him. And we'll find out what he's going to tell him in just a minute. I wonder how many of us men really appreciate the problem our wives have in doing the family marketing these days. Well, I didn't, Mr. Lang, until I went shopping with my wife last weekend. With all these shortages, she's had to get her shopping down to a regular science. She even jots things down on her grocery list in the order of their importance. And by the way, I noticed she had parquet margin right on top. Says she always looks first for parquet. And she got it, too. Good for her. That's what we said. Because our whole family goes for that swell parquet flavor on rolls, waffles, or just plain slices of bread. Yes, millions prefer parquet margarine's fresh, country-sweet flavor. And you'll find it the same fine quality today as always. Kraft is making all the parquet possible with available supplies. And your dealer is continuing to get his fair share so he can supply you from time to time. So take a tip from wise shoppers and always look first for delicious, nourishing parquet. P-A-R-K-A-Y. Parquet margarine. The quality spread for bread made by Kraft. Well, let's get back to the great Gildersleeve, who has spent a restless night in imaginary struggle with the mayor. Now, in cold daylight, with all his arguments assembled, he is advancing upon the mayor's office. Hi, 
I judge. Hi, Gildy. You know where I'm going? No, where? I'm going in there to the mayor and tell him I want more money. All right, go ahead and tell him. Well, I will. Do you think I'll get it? You might. And on the other hand, you might not. How can you refuse? Where can you get a man to run the water department on the salary I'm getting? I wouldn't advise you to bring that up. Is that so? How many water commissioners do you know around here? All right, all right. You're the indispensable man. Yes, I am. And I'm going to tell him. Go ahead and tell him. What if he says no? That's up to you. You present your arguments, he considers them in the light of the city's budget. He presents his point of view, you consider it. You present further arguments, then he presents his further arguments. Oh, you make me sick. Arguments, further arguments. I'm not going to argue with the mayor. I'm going to tell him. All right, go ahead and tell him. All right, I will. Hello, Chief. You busy? Well, Commissioner, come on in. Have a chair. Well, I can't stay. I got to go down the hall and see the mayor. Oh? Oh, excuse me. Police department gates talking. Cat on the roof? Fire department takes care of that lady. No, not at all. That ought to break up that pinochle game at the firehouse. Well, Commissioner, you going down to see the mayor, you say? Yes. Did he send for you? Send for me? No. No, he didn't send for me. I asked him if I could see him. Oh. Why? Should he send for me? No reason. I just thought he might have sent for you, that's all. That kind of nippy out today, ain't it? Yeah, nippy. Say, Chief, I'm going up there and tell the mayor I've got to have an increase in my salary. You are? Well, what do you know? I'm just going to tell him, that's all. Don't you think that's the only way? Well, it's one way. It's a good way if you like that way. Sure. Well, I was thinking, Chief. I was thinking maybe I'd have a better chance if I could get a little support from you. <laughs> you know, we department heads have got to stick together. Haven't we, Chief? Well... Especially a couple of jolly boys. After all, you could use a little raise yourself. Well, sure, only... Come on, let's go up to the mayor's office together. The two of us will scare him to death. How about it? You go ahead. I wish you luck. What's the matter? Are you scared? Certainly not. I just figured that this is no time to be rocking the boat. Of all the chicken-hearted, useless... Now, Commissioner, is that a nice way to talk? Well, you are. But I don't need your help. I'll go see the mayor by myself. And I'll tell him by, George, right now. <laughs> I'm telling you, Peavy, a man can stand just so much. That's right. There comes a time in a man's life when he's either a man or a mouse. And when that time comes, he's got to face it. Has to face what, Mr. Gillespie? Has to make a decision, that's what. Well, I've made it. What did you decide? What do you think? I'm no mouse, Peavy, I'll tell you that. Yes, sir, the die is cast. Or it soon will be. <laughs> Give me another Coke. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, are you sure you should? Don't worry, I can handle it. Give me another Coke. All right, you're the customer, and if you want it... I want it. Yes, sir. They can't push me around. Here you are, Mr. Gildersleeve, but take it a little easy. Why don't you take off your overcoat? I can't say, Peavy. Got to get going. No, sir, they can't push me around. Who's that? Nobody. Nobody can push me around, Peavy. Want to know what I'm going to do, Peavy? What? I'm going to tell them. That's good. You want to know what I'm going to tell them? What? I'm going to tell them plenty. That's good. Um, you want to know what I'm going to tell them plenty about? What? I'm going to... 
Excuse me, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yes, sir. Oh, come on. Pharmacy. Uh, just a minute, Mrs. Eberbo. I'll see. Yes, sir. I'll go right up to him and I'll say, listen here, you cheap politician. Uh, no, Mrs. Eberbond. The four o'clock bus hadn't come in yet. Uh, thank you and call again. Excuse me, Mr. Gildersleeve. You, you were about to tell me something. What? Oh. Peavy, I'm going to tell the mayor something. The mayor? Yes, sir. The mayor. My boss, Peavy. I'm going right in there and lay it on the line. And if he doesn't like it, he knows what he can do. You going right over there now, Mr. Gildersleeve? Right this minute. No time like the present. Strike while the iron is hot. Stitch in time, save nine. Right. Well, wish me luck, Peavy. I do, Mr. Gildersleeve. I, I do. That'll be 40 cents for the coats. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> 40 cents. Here's a half, Peavy. Have a Coke yourself. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve, not during business hours. <laughs> then have a cigar, Peavy. Have a cigar. Hmm. Wonder where he thinks he is. private office. Maybe you don't want to be disturbed. Maybe I should come back another day. <laughs> no, by George. Who's that? Uh, uh, it's me, uh, Gilsley. Oh. Well, come in. Um... Sorry to disturb you, Your Honor. That's all right. I was just dictating to Miss Beinwall here. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> well, what's on your mind? I am... Uh, uh, it's confidential. That's all right. I don't have any secrets from Miss Beinwall. Do I, Miss Beinwall? No. <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, this is um, financial. No, well, that's different. Why don't you go and transcribe these letters while I talk to Mr. Gildersleeve, and then we can uh, resume. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. I appreciate your thoughtfulness. But a man is talking salary. I'm very glad you brought it up, Gildersleeve. You are? Well... Yes, I am. In fact, if you hadn't brought it up... I would have. Well, <laughs> by George, Your Honor, I gotta hand it to you. I guess you've noticed the rising cost of living yourself. Certainly. And there is absolutely no doubt we're going to be subjected to a great deal of pressure from all our employees to increase salaries. Huh? Everybody will want a raise. I'll take Miss Pinewall there. She's been with me six years. Certainly deserves more money than she's getting. Very loyal. Oh, I can see that. Just the same, I can't give her any more money. And you've got to take the same attitude with your people over in the water department. But the, the cost of living... They'll just have to pull in their belts, that's all. But, Your Honor... Yes, sir, that's the way it's got to be, all up and down the line. And I'm expecting all my department heads to cooperate, 100%. Oh, the employees in line. That's the ticket. And uh, if I have any trouble, well, the council has suggested more than once that we might arrange a merger of several departments. Merger? Eliminate a couple of commissioners. <laughs> <laughs> I'm uh, thinking that over. Well, I surely hope that won't be necessary, Your Honor. I hope not. Well... Oh, uh, before you go. Oh, yes, I was just going. Before you go. <laughs> oh. I uh, don't know whether I've told you. I have a pet charity. You have? It's called Homes for Horses. I suppose you're fond of horses. Well, horses love them. My favorite animal. Well, you'll be interested in the work of our society. We take old horses who've devoted their lives to serving the community, milk horses, truck horses, all kinds of horses, and we put them in a, a nice pasture where they can spend their declining years. Ah, uh, very touching. You've got a big heart, Your Honor. 
I can't help it. Anyhow, we're having a big drive to raise funds for HFH. HF? Homes for Horses, I just told you. Oh. We need funds. And I'm expecting all my department heads to make a substantial contribution. <laughs> That's a wonderful opportunity to a worthy cause. Did you have any particular amount in mind? No, no, this is purely voluntary. I might mention that Chief Gates has volunteered a week's pay. <laughs> What's the matter? Oh, nothing. I'm just sitting down wrong. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Your Honor. Thanks for everything. Not at all. Drop in any time you have a problem. Uh, yes. Well, goodbye, Your Honor. Goodbye. Goodbye, Miss Badwill. Oh, no, it's you, Judge. I was just going home, Gildy. Well, did you tell the mayor? Why don't you mind your own business? Homes for horses. A week's pay for a horse. It's blackmail, that's what it is. Well, am I going to do it? Am I a man or a mouse? Mouse, I guess. Pay to the order of home for horses. Uh, Keith, yes? I don't know whether it's the time to bring it up, but Mrs. Pettibone was here today. Mrs. Pettibone? What did she want? And no hundreds. She was collecting for the community chest. Huh? Now, don't get excited. Community chest? Now, that makes some sense. Homes for horses. If you give money to the community chest, you know what it does? It covers every worthwhile charity in town. People that are sick, hard up, veterans, children, everybody. Yes, sir. If you give to the community chest, you know your money is really accomplishing something. And goodness knows I'm in no position to throw it around. Yes, by George. Pay for the order of community chest. <laughs> no, sir, they can't push me around. Good night, folks. The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. It is written by John Wheaton and Sam Moore. The music is by Jack Meekin. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley as Leroy, Louise Erickson as Marjorie, and Lillian Randolph as Bertie. Judge Hooker is Earl Ross, and Dick Legrand plays Mr. Peavy. This is John Lang saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company and inviting you to listen in again next Wednesday for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. If you're planning a Halloween party next week, treat your guests to a variety of Pabstet cheese food surprises. Pabstet spreads like butter at room temperature for delightful sandwiches and snacks. Pabstet adds rich cheddar cheese flavor to omelets, Welsh rarebits, and souffles. And you also can slice it into neat wedges when chilled for serving with fruits and pie. Party time or any time, delicious, nourishing Pabstet cheese food really satisfies. Get both tempting varieties, pimento pabstet in the red package and golden cheddar pabstet in the yellow package. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.